Join me in the virtual chat with a standing ovation for Greg Eisenberg. Amazing. Am I, am I here? You're here. Okay, amazing. Thank you so much for having me. Let's let's do this. Thanks, Greg. Let's do this. Cool. Well, hello, everyone. It's always actually been a dream of mine to do this, to be at CMX. So this is sort of a bucket list moment for myself. So um, post in the chat, bucket list moment. This feels really good. Thank you for making it happen. Let's dive right into it. So next slide. All right, so quick agenda. Talk a little bit about me and my company, Late Checkout. We're gonna talk a little bit of a brief history of the internet. Um, we're also gonna talk about the lay of the land just in terms of social media and why community platforms play a role in it. And then the meat of the presentation is really, how do we mine for gold on platforms like Reddit and coming up with startup ideas? And I wanna save a few minutes, hopefully we can get to it. We do a couple Q and A, uh, uh, you know, so questions and answers. So feel free to just put it in the Q and A. Next slide. Okay, so a little bit about me. My life's work is is community and building community based products. I've been an advisor to TikTok. I used to run a, pro a product at WeWork. I've started and sold community platforms. Next slide. And today I run Late Checkout. Late Checkout is a holding company that believes that community-based products outperform non-community-based products. And we believe over the next 10, 20 years, this is one of the greatest opportunities of our lifetime. So we've set up three product uh, business, sort of businesses to go after it. One is a product design agency. Um, the second is a studio where we incubate our own community-based products. And the third is a venture fund where we invest and look to acquire community-based products. Next slide. And I'm so excited to be here. Let's dig in. Next slide. Cool. So to understand where we're going, we need to understand where we've been. Um, I believe, you know, if we look at the history of the web, you can sort of break it out into 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. Um, next slide. 1.0 is, you know, the hallmark is desktop websites, portals, that sort of thing. Think 94 to 2003 or four. Um, it's all about reading. Um, it's, it's about taking a magazine and putting it online. Next slide. 2.0 is really about, you know, you know, mobile coming in and reading and writing. So, you know, for think of Facebook, right? Not only could you, um, you know, read what's going on in Facebook, but you can actually post things on Facebook. Next slide. And when you think of social media, you have 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. 1.0 is, is defined by desktop, um, things like Friendster, MySpace. 2.0 defined by mobile. You have things by Instagram, like Instagram, Snapchat. And 3.0, which is where we are currently, is what I call the intimate and immersive sort of uh, social media. Intimate, think of community platforms. Think of things like Clubhouse. Immersive, think TikTok, full screen video. Next slide. Um, and why are we, you know, why is this intimate internet happening? Well, the reason why is through 2.0, we gave basically billions of people the ability to uh, speak on microphones and it got really noisy. Next slide. That's why people have found refuge on community platforms. So communities have become the comfortable way to converse. Next slide. Things like Discord, um, which I think they just rejected a $15 billion uh, acquisition offer. Platforms like Reddit, even WhatsApp. These are This is where people are finding refuge. This is where it's happening. No one wants to broadcast every, everything anymore. They're looking for these safe spaces. Next slide. Um, and there's four main community platforms today, uh, community, uh, four main problems with community platforms today. Um, but the biggest thing is many people just feel alone um, on these platforms. And um, I'm going to talk a bit about how we can sort of un unbundle. I'll talk about that in the next slide. 
What unbundling uh, basically means, it came from a, you know, a very popular post by a guy named Andrew Parker who wrote about Craigslist and how Craigslist was unbundled. So if you think of the apartment section of Cra Craigslist, that became you know, Airbnb. The personal section of Craigslist, that became Tinder. Um, so what that means is basically if you can take a big platform and make it very vertical and specific, that's where the opportunity is. And that's actually happening on places like Reddit and it's happening on places like Discord. There's a huge opportunity to build the next, you know, $1 million a year business, $10 million a year business, a billion dollar a year business by thinking about how do you come up with insights around unbundling some of these uh, sort of larger networks. Next slide. So today we're going to talk about Reddit uh, specifically because I do believe it's such a gold mine. And I'm going to give you a framework for how to do it. Next slide. So I'll say screenshot this, screenshot this, tweet it out. Here's a framework for how to do it. I'm going to go into each of these steps. So by the end of this presentation, you will, you'll know how to sort of come up with insights and build a startup, transition your business and, and sort of come up with the next big idea from it. So it's find a subreddit, join a subreddit, see what they want, which is really distilling insights, creating a, a more intimate space, um, building a product and building on top of that. Let me explain each of those. Let's start, next slide. So the first thing you gotta do is find a subreddit. So, you know, yes, you might have an idea, you might have a business, uh, call it, you know, a keto business or keto diet business, and you might know what subreddit you wanna go after, but you might not. So one of the thing, you know, one of the hard, one of the things, one of the places I go to is a, uh, a platform called redditlist.com and it basically shows you all these trending subreddits so it's it shows you what are the communities that are happening right now and the, and here's my checklist i look is it growing fast if it is that's a good sign i look does it have a critical mass of sub subscribers if it has 50,000 or more subscribers there's a huge opportunity to build a business there so i look at that number 3 do you have a competitive advantage there really important right um, you're competing against the world. You're not just competing in your country, state, city, town, neighborhood. Um, and you have to be passionate about this space, you, you know, to have that advantage over others. So to find the subject subreddit, go check out Reddit list and look at these criteria. Next slide. Step two, you got to join the subreddit. Um, you have to become one with the community. You have to immerse yourself. I think of it as almost like become a cultural anthropologist in an isolated tribe. Their memes need to be your memes. It's very, very important. So you got to learn their language and learn their rituals. Spend one to two hours a day just to just, you know, be in there and just observe and take notice of what are the posts that are resonating with people. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to just share useful link links. And honestly, most importantly, engage like a human. I know that's crazy to say, you know, crazy to say, um, but a lot of people and marketers, they come in and they're sort of pushy, just engage like a regular person, try to be one of them. Next slide. You want to see what they want. This is about distilling the subreddit, coming up with key insights as to what are startup ideas, what are product ideas for these people. Um, so look for themes that emerge. Pay special attention to problems that your startup can make a real dent in. So I like to start with some useful questions to ask yourself. So what recommendations do they ask for? Are they, are they constantly you know, asking for recommendations? Take note of that. Do they keep complaining about something specific? That means there's a huge opportunity there. Complaints are amazing. They're literally telling you uh, that there's an opportunity for a business there. And if you were trying to achieve their goals, what would make it easier? That'll get you in the mind frame for coming up with startup ideas in case, uh, in case you, you, know, you can't come up, come up with it. You, have to, you, you look at their actions, you look at their motivations, and you're going to find their problems. Next slide. It's really important to create a closer space for communication once, you know, once you've starting starting to make friends. So once you've gotten comfortable with the community, take your connection from the way I like to think about it is take it from dial up to fiber by creating your own gathering place. 
So that might be, you know, for example, a Slack community. It might be a Discord. It might be a Facebook group. It might be a WhatsApp mess, you know, WhatsApp group or an Instagram group. The important piece here is that you want to create these one-on-one -on -one connections and personal direct connections. And some of these platforms are really good at that. The way I like to think about it is make it feel like their own special corner of the internet. Now that you understand them, you're one of them, is you can, you know, sort of create something that feels like home to them, um, that has their rituals, et cetera. Super, super important. Next slide. Step five is about building something for them. So now you know you know you know these people, right? Not only do you know these people, but you 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 uh, you have a space for them. You have an intimate space for them. So you know, I think it's really about prioritizing. Okay, you've come up with you know 10, 20, 30, 40 startup ideas for products that you think that they could you know really need. They really need. And I think it's you know the hard part here is really prioritizing. What do you think they need the most? So figuring out what to build, um, building it, um, and I should I should note that that you know the beauty about building technology today is you don't need to you know reinvent the wheel. So if it is a technology product, how do you use no code tools um, to make it really easy to you know build something in a week, thirty days, that sort of thing, and then just launch it and see how it goes. That's step five. Next slide. Once you've built it, the beauty is, you know, you're going to be iterating on the product and it's just so much easier to co-build with your community. So now you have this discord server, let's say of a hundred, 500 people, a thousand people build with them, build with them, show them the product, iterate from there, continue building. And I know a lot of you are probably interested in web three. That, this whole sort of NFT tokens, um, tokenized community. Uh, this is a huge opportunity. At LayCheka, we're, you know, a third or 50% of our time is focused on Web3. And, you know, building with the, with the community together is a huge part of that. So if you are interested in that, feel free to ask. If anyone has Q&A around uh, Web3, feel free to th uh, throw it in the Q&A as well. Next slide. So I thought it would be fun. This is sort of a last minute thing, but I thought it would be fun if I just pick a random subreddit and just show you how I think, I mean, this can go completely wrong, by the way. And this, this is, this is, you know, that's kind of fun. Um, but uh, go completely random, pick a subreddit and actually do a live demo for a couple minutes and show you how I think about using this six step framework, how I'm thinking about live going through this subreddit and how I come up with startup ideas through mining for gold and subreddit. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right now. Um, and I pick the um, fat, fat fire community. Um, let me go and share my screen. The fat fire community, for those of you who don't know, is the financial uh, independent. Fire stands for financial independent retire early. And fat means just, you know, you want a lot of money. These are people with five, five million or more people. Um, and the way I found this community is uh, actually through Reddit list. And I saw that it was growing and I saw that it went, you know, it was ballooning. Uh, at the time, it was like 150,000 members and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. Um, so I knew that there was something here. One of the things I look at is the first things I look at is the filter by flair. Um, OK, so actually, before I go into that, this is a community of people who either have a lot of money or who want to have a lot of money or aspirational. So when you look at the filter by flair, what this is, is almost like categories for the different posts. So you see here, need advice, inheritance, retirement, health insurance, path to fat fire, happiness. These are clues as to the type of content that people care about. And there's huge opportunities to actually build products for this. So as an example, path to fat fire, what does that tell me? It tells me that one of the most popular posts in this particular subreddit is that people are super excited about getting here. So it's very aspirational. Is there a product here? You know, you know, coming, you know coming up with ideas out loud, but is there a paid community that you can charge $29.99 a month for people 
you know, to have accountability uh, together to become Fat Fire? And what is sort of some utility that you can bring them? Maybe it's email, um, reminders, et cetera. So that, you know, example of something that I just, you know, can come up with. Um, retirement, needing advice, uh, health insurance. So these are the sort of filter by flair gives you a sense as to the type of businesses that you can create. And then I just sort of, you know, you can go through, there's uh, these categories here, um, or filters, I should say, where you can sort by the top. And I could say like, okay, what are the most important, you know, biggest, uh, biggest posts of the last year, um, you know, and from this, you can really just get a sense, for, you know, from the community um, that here, like, for example, I followed Fat Fire to learn not to read your humble brags. And I think like, that's a huge insight. The insight is people are here actually for education. So is there an educational product that you can build? Um, and I think there's, yeah, you just go through this, um, you know, maybe, you know, maybe there's a sort of millionaire community that you can create. And uh, you can see that, you know, happy fourth birthday, you've all done exactly what I've always imagined. So there's just all, you know, this sort of gets your head going. Um, you know, ask me anything, I'm a advisor to high net worth individuals and institutions. So you can see that, oh, maybe people want an easier way to get access to, you know, these high net worth, these wealth advisors for high net worth, um, uh, high net worth people. Um, so just, this is how I think about it. Um, to summarize, look at the flares, go through the top, summarize, uh, filter by, you know, this week, this month, this year, and just observe. Um, and don't forget to go into the, the comment section and just go through this. And I guarantee you, you spend, you know, 15 hours in a week and you're going to have 20, 30, 40 business ideas that are excellent. So I'm going to stop sharing. And this is perfect uh, timing, actually. Um, because we we have time for Q and A, and I was worried about that. Um, so thank you so much. Time for Q and A, but you are still showing your screen share, not your face. <laughs> Boom! There you are. <laughs> That was awesome, Greg. Thank you so much. And I think uh, David Spinks's heart has started beating again after you said you were going to do a live demo. So we're back on track. <laughs> my, uh, that just, that warms my heart. So happy to hear that. <laughs> Yeah, no, that was awesome. And there's lots of stuff going on in the chat. People are really excited, especially with that live demo to see how you can actually use Reddit like that. Um, and we do have a couple of questions from people in the audience. So let's start with Tom asks, to build community, what role does like Facebook groups com play compared to a community platform on your own domain? Yeah, so, you know, people often ask me, they say like, hey, like, should I use Circle? Should I use Mighty Network? Should I use Facebook groups? And the answer is it really depends. Um, I think for, you know, it depends. There's the beauty about community is that it's not one size fits all. And I think we should acknowledge that. I think that we should acknowledge that what works for the Batfire community might be, might not be Discord, right? Because, you know, Discord's maybe more gaming oriented, that sort of thing. What works for the Fat Fire community might be Facebook groups, um, but might not be Mighty Networks or Circle um, for a lot of reasons. So what I would, uh, Tom, the way to think about it is I would just make a list of the pros and cons of each of these platforms, but I would encourage you to, to make it really easy for people, um, you know, to get to these, to, to get to the community and make it easy as possible. And again, remember I said, it's about making it feel like a home. Choose a platform that makes it feel like a home. Great advice. We've got a couple more minutes for more questions. So I'm just going to go top down. Uh, Emmett actually also wonders. So he's currently running a free Slack community um, and wonders, how would you recommend pivoting to a paid community? So I would actually, Emmett, I would actually think about not pivoting completely to a paid community, but coming up with a set of features by actually working with the community and being like, oh, hey, like, what are things that you want? Like, what would you pay for? And 
uh, keeping that community ready, but actually just adding an additional like, hey, it's more of a premium play. So think about premium. Um, and I would say just, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't exactly like you've got a good thing going on. Um, just have an additional thing. Perfect. Oh, and Tom says, thank you for answering his question. Um, I want to ask Damon's question next. What trend are you witnessing in the web 3.0 movement that you think will be important for B2B community owners to be aware of? Okay, so that I, I'll answer that question. I'm going to start with just Web3 and the three opportunities, the sort of community-oriented opportunities that I see. The first is tokenized communities. The second is NFT projects like Bored Apes. I'm sure some of you have seen that. Um, and, the th and the third is what's called a DAO. Um, and I'll explain each really quickly. Um, a, a tokenized community is essentially a paid community um, where members have ownership in the upside of, um, of the community. So a very popular one is one called FWB, Friends with Benefits. You should all check it out. It's fwb.help, I believe is the URL. Um, it costs like 75 tokens to get access to it. And the price is, now it's crazy. Now it's like $7,000 to access this Discord community. The market cap for this is literally like $100 million. And it's, 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 a, it's a community. So pretty crazy stuff, really crazy. Um, and it just goes to show you the power of community that people want to be with each other. And, you know, it's a, it's a fundamental human need. So tokenized community is basically taking something like a discord and, and having these private channels unlockable via tokens. The second is these NFTs. Now the NFT projects, um, the ones that work for community best are these, you know, 10,000 NFTs projects like, you know, board, um, uh, board Apes, um, Board Ape Yacht Club. So you basically buy an NFT and it gives you access to this community. Um, but it also has this visual representation of, you know, you see this, you see this ape and you connect with it, right? So there's huge opportunities. Um, there's another project called World of Women. Like there's, there's, there's huge opportunities to create NFT projects for specific communities, very similar to how I was talking about unbundling of Reddit. What are opportunities to sort of build NFT projects for other subreddits. Really big opportunity. And the third is a DAO. A DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And what a DAO means is it's, the way I like to think about it is like it's a group chat with a financial, with a bank account. Easiest way to think about it. And it's, think of it, it's like a community. It's like a Discord community. Um, or a Facebook group, except you have this bank account and people could vote what to do with the bank account. How cool is that? So think of, you know, that paid community question. Imagine if you were spending $10 a month as a member of this community and you can actually say like, hey, I think we should do X, Y, Z with it. Super cool. It's kind of like Patreon to the next level. Um, to answer your question, so that's sort of the lay of the land. And I wanted to give that um, because that is applicable to B2B and B2C. That's awesome. Uh, and I, I feel like there's probably opportunity for the CMX community. Like imagine if everybody paid $10 for CMX Summit, like what kind of speaker we could pay for, you know, like could Lady Gaga perform live? I don't know. Possibilities. Absolutely. I think like that's a challenge for David Spinks if he's listening. We, uh, you know, Web3 CMX, Let's get let's let's see what that looks like. I think that's you know Web three is the future. Um, if anyone's interested in that, you know, follow me on Twitter um, at Greg Eisenberg. Shoot me a message. Um, it's the future, and uh, I'm I feel very grateful to play a role in it in shaping it. There you go. And to answer David Spinks's question, I feel like the Greg Eisenberg fan club community uh, is currently on Twitter, but perhaps there will be another community space in the future, Greg, that you can invite everybody what, to. Spoiler alert. <laughs> totally. I like it. I like it. Thank you so much, Greg. That was, uh, that was awesome. And the chat, everybody enjoyed it. So please give us all of your emojis and applauses for Greg Eisenberg. Thank you so much. You're amazing. Um, and uh, speak to you all soon.